Yves Cochet was Minister of the Environment under Lionel Jospin in 2001. He became what we call a collapsologue. Convinced that the end of the world is near, he left Paris to settle in a small village in Brittany. He completely changed his life. No more golden desks and suits and ties. He wore his boots and he is living happily in the middle of nature. Brad, are you coming with us? That's the cat too, most definitely. He is very happy here. He takes care of biodiversity. He fights for life by eating rats. Why did you choose to settle here? It was about 14 years ago now. My daughter and I were already thinking about the collapse. We told ourselves that we had to find a place that was resilient. That is to say, where there are basic amenities, being water, food and energy, such as wood. My belief is that the worst will happen. The worst would be that we will have a choice and we should be prepared for it. This choice is simple. Help. Or kill each other. Hey friends, if you want to make apple jam, put them in your pockets. According to the former minister, to survive in 2050, we will have to be united. We don't have a visionary survivalist from California with the bunker and the Winchester. That's not our thing. It means putting our ecological ideas into practice, to do what I call the social healing biotope. That's to say that we are on good terms with our neighbors, to exchange products and services. That's what we do, with people who are three or four kilometers away. It may go from a dietary point of view. Today, the politician is already trained to be able to live without running out of resources. We'll see a swamp fed by the stream, but it is dry at the moment because it has not rained for three months. It is a problem in Brittany and elsewhere. There is a bit of water. I didn't think there were so many. It's nothing. It's just a puddle. It's usually full. You can pump it as long as you want. You can even bring a watering can if you want to. To make it drinkable, you have to boil it. Once you've boiled the water, you can drink it. It's wonderful. What a beautiful landscape. It's paradise here. Sometimes I go on boat tours with the Gransons. You need to have a good laugh. <laughs> Even though he fears the worst, Ives Kochet remains an optimistic man. In the event of a shortage, he has everything planned out. What is it? It's a well with a hand pump on it. There is no electricity. It allows you to have water annually. You can boil water to make it drinkable. We don't lack water. It was one of the resilience criteria. To have water. Because, as you know, without water. Gentlemen and ladies, do you live in Paris? You are in your Haussmann building on the fourth floor, no tap water. Here, you need to have water. Neighbors, we're trying to have better relationships with, because we're either helping or killing each other, most are skeptical. They want to know if I am sure that the world will end soon in 2030. They say that mankind has seen others, that we'll get there. Alone against all odds, Ives Kochet does not give up. Maybe the world will end. But he's not out of ideas. If you want, we'll see the dry toilets that are well known and are part of the ecological hardware legend. We open like that and we do it like this and you have electricity inside your dry toilet with the sawdust container and all other little things. To wash your hands leaving the toilet, there is nothing better than rainwater. Here is our first container of 1,000 liters of water that comes from the roof and falls in here. Then we have it on a tap. We put this one so that people can come and wipe their hands after using the toilet. 
he decided to live secluded like in the 18th century. According to him, the only way to escape the disaster of global warming is, for example, in order to stop producing greenhouse gases, the former minister will propose a radical solution. No more cars to get around. He focuses everything on a particular vehicle, the horse-drawn carriage. There is a first horse-drawn carriage here. It's a horse-drawn carriage that's been handed over, but that is sometimes used for fun and going out with the kids on Sundays. There, you can install one or two horses, which allows this carriage to be towed in case we want to go to the village to visit the neighbors. It can make you laugh, but I am convinced that starting in the years 2035, the main mode of human transport, especially in Brittany and France, will be the equestrian mode. It will take a lot of horses for the wagons, the stagecoaches, the horse-drawn carriages, between villages, or we will have teams, or we'll ride a horse. If you come here, you'll see the second carriage. This one is a bit lighter than the first one we saw. It has four seats. There are two at the front. There is the driver who is my daughter and I am the bellboy. You can take two people behind. That's how you hook up the horse's hitch. We are preparing for the future. We're the main mode of travel. As we say now, cars, trucks, vans, tractors, all of this will disappear due to lack of oil. If Ives Kachet wants to go far away, he must pace himself. So, with his horses, he looks after them. They love apples. Don't give them too much. Because they are gluttons. In addition, it's like when you eat too much of something, like chocolate, you're overloaded. There they are. Who is this apple for? Who is the apple for? The sweet apple. It's sweet. He is beautiful. Eat, drink, get around, and all without depending on anyone. Ives Kochet has everything planned. The same goes for energy. Because according to him, in 2050, there will be no electricity. It is with this wood that we try to produce our energy. We don't buy wood from outside. We have enough of it in the small forest of three hectares behind. Three hectares is enough for 10 or 12 people. It gives us exactly that. It's been almost a winter. You put logs like these, in the fireplace. Here, we have hot plates for cooking. We are autonomous, and we can warm ourselves if there is ever no electricity. Gas heater, oil, or coal. They are horrible. Oh my God. The only recourse for Yidis Koshet is the countryside. In 2050, will have to flee from cities. At first, nature is very dirty. It's raining, the socks are wet, it smells bad. It's probably the future, because I don't see how in 2038, we'll live healthily in Paris. It begs the question, if Ives Kochid is at this point, the visionary of a disintegrating world, why doesn't he take up the torch to convince French people of the usefulness of his approach? We asked him the question. If I ran for office, I won't show up anymore, but I did. I would say, vote for me. We'll all try not to die together. It's not funny. If I can save a few people through my actions or speeches, that would be nice. I would have had a successful life. If instead of 50% of humanity dying, she dies at 49%. It looks awful, but I tell myself that I would have helped save what could be saved. Yves Kochet is dubious about the future of humanity. But he is not the only one sharing this opinion. That is the least that can be said.